A central Kentucky man who admitted to killing his ex-girlfriend learns how long he'll spend in prison. Why her family says the punishment doesn't fit the crime. Sunshine finally breaking out across the Bluegrass State. It's bringing a warm-up to start the weekend. We'll talk about the 50s coming up. And some people in the central Kentucky community are finding an odd item nailed to the ground in front of their homes. We'll tell you why the items were put there. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 4. Good afternoon, I'm Jennifer Palumbo. After a really cold morning with lows in the teens, things are looking up just in time for the weekend. Temperatures are in the upper 30s this afternoon, and we could see the 50s tomorrow and Sunday. You're looking at Rupp Arena, where the Kentucky Sport Boat and Recreation Show is going on right now. We'll take you inside a little later, but first, Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has a first look at the forecast, and Chris, it's looking great. Yeah, really, finally starting to look at. I know a lot of folks, uh, myself included, early this afternoon looking at the clouds, going, okay, sun, anytime now, you can come on out. Finally, getting a little sunshine uh, on that view of Rupp Arena and on the view on top of Hamburg Pavilion as well. Starting to really see the blue skies flexing some muscle now up to 40 in Lexington. Winds are coming at us from the south and the southwest at around nine miles an hour. That is a warmer wind that is blowing. So watch how the temperatures are coming up from southwest to northeast. 40 into Frankfurt and Lexington. Only 36 Mount Sterling, 34 Moorhead, 33 Covington, where we still have a little cloud cover. Even folks dealing with the clouds will see those temperatures come up a little bit over the next couple of hours. Live First Alert Defender, hey, nothing that is going on across Kentucky. There's that little window of some uh, sun that we're seeing now across parts of the area, but more in the way of some overcast will settle on into town as we go through the evening and overnight. But focus on what's going on to our west and southwest on the regional temperature map. 53 St. Louis, 52 down into Memphis, Tennessee, Birmingham at 54. Why do we care what's going on to our west and southwest? That's the air that will be in here as we hit the 24 hour uh, fast forward button into your Saturday. So, moral of the story, those thermometers are coming up. Not so much this evening, though. They go down a little bit toward 30 degrees by 11 o'clock. Nowhere near as cold tonight, Jennifer, as what we had this morning when some areas hit the single digits. Seven day forecast looks like a Roller coaster when I come back in a few. We're tracking a breaking news alert out of Lexington this afternoon. A Lexington police officer has been suspended and faces criminal charges. Officer James Norris is charged with harassment with physical contact and second degree official misconduct, both Class B misdemeanors. According to an internal police investigation, Norris had forceful physical contact with a suspect. Norris has been stripped of all police responsibilities and put on paid leave until his case goes through the courts or police administration determine his future with the department. We'll have a closer look at the case ahead on WKYT News at 5. A central Kentucky man who admitted to killing his girlfriend now knows how long he'll spend behind bars. Brian Reed killed 28-year-old Gypsy Reyes in Frankfurt in May of 2013. The victim's family was in the Franklin County courtroom today as a judge announced Reed's sentence. WKYT's Hillary Thornton has reaction from the family. It's our top story at. Late last year, Brian Reed admitted to killing his girlfriend, Gypsy Reyes, taking a plea deal with a reduced charge of first degree manslaughter. And on Friday, he received the maximum sentence for that charge. Police found 28 year old Reyes in her apartment back in May of 2013. Reed, who was initially charged with murder, admitted killing her during an argument. When he accepted the plea deal back in December, dropping his charge to first degree manslaughter, Reed also admitted that he had violated an emergency protective order obtained by Reyes. We just ask that we be sentenced in conformance with the Commonwealth's offer on a plea of guilty, Judge. Reyes's family says even though Reed got the maximum sentence of 20 years, they are not satisfied with the outcome. The fact that he gets to, to be free in 20 years and I never get my sister back, we never get to see our nieces anymore because the courts won't let us see them. Now, Judge Thomas Wingate says this case included some of the most victims' impact statements he has seen in his career, which he says is a big reason why he gave Reed the maximum sentence. Sentence. In Franklin County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Reed was also sentenced to 12 months for violating the emergency protective order. He and Reyes have a child together. 
It's a bizarre situation that caught the attention of investigators. The Lincoln County Sheriff's Department says people have been finding pill bottles cut in half and nailed in their front yards. Each pill bottle has aluminum foil inside. There have been about five cases along Kentucky Highway 2141. Today, the mystery was solved. Coming up on WKYT News at 4.30, why the bottles were put there by a bus driver. Our reporters are working on a number of other stories for WKYT starting at 4.30. Amber Philpott joins us from the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Good afternoon, Amber. Hello, Jennifer. Two Madison County women face charges after police say one of them overdosed on heroin in front of her seven-year-old son. Annetta Clements was rushed to the hospital Wednesday morning. Police say her son was in the room with her when she overdosed. The next day, police arrested his babysitter at the hospital after staff became concerned about her. Police say Diana Byers was high on pills. At the time, both women have been charged with endangering the welfare of a minor. You're going to hear from Byard's husband coming up on WKYT News at 5 and 6. A man accused of killing his boyfriend headed back to court this morning. A judge ordered a psychiatric evaluation for Matthew Donahue. Police say he stabbed Todd Schumacher in the couple's home on Lamont Drive last month. He's also accused of putting Schumacher's dog in a hot oven and burning it. Donahue is back in court on March 27th. A group of dogs found living in deplorable conditions are being nursed back to health here in Lexington. Eight of 54 dogs taken from an Ohio County home were brought to the Lexington Humane Society last night. Once they've been fostered and socialized, the dogs will be available for adoption. We'll have an update on the dogs process on WKYT News at 5:30. That is a look at just some of the news in progress. Jennifer, back to you. Thanks, Amber. Now to stories making headlines across the nation at four. The measles outbreak may be spreading. Health officials are keeping an eye on two suspected cases in New Jersey and Ohio. This comes after a cluster of children at a daycare near Chicago came down with the highly contagious disease. Marley Hall has the latest. Unvaccinated children and staff at this daycare near Chicago have been told to stay home for three weeks. Five babies at the Kindercare Learning Center in Palatine have been diagnosed with the measles. It's insane. I just feel sorry for the parents who have sick kids right now. Two of the five cases are confirmed, and up to 10 more children may have been exposed. Babies under 12 months are especially vulnerable because they're too young to get the vaccine. This is a highly contagious disease. There are likely to be more cases. Across the nation, there have been at least 150 measles cases in 14 states, many of them linked to Disney theme parks in California. Near Toledo, Ohio, parents at Clay High School received a letter alerting them that a student was diagnosed with the measles. Parents are being urged to make sure their children have been vaccinated. I just think it's important to have all the vaccinations that, you know, I, I you try to keep your kids safe at all costs. 20 states allow parents to opt out of immunizations for philosophical reasons. It is a little bit disturbing that people have decided not to vaccinate their children or themselves and that these diseases are allowed to spread in the community. Measles can be very serious for children under five. It can lead to pneumonia, brain swelling, and even death. Most people recover in a few weeks. Marley Hall, CBS News. Measles was officially declared eliminated in the U.S. in 2000 after decades of intensive childhood vaccine efforts. But last year, the U.S. had its highest number of measles cases in two decades. So far, Kentucky does not have any cases. The push is on for people to enroll in a new health care plan mandated by the Affordable Care Act or risk paying a fine. The fee will depend on the person's income. The deadline to enroll is Sunday, February 15th. Federal officials haven't indicated if there will be an extension of the deadline. Those who did not have medical coverage last year may already be facing a fee. Follow WKYT online at WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Stocks ending the week on a down note despite Labor Department data showing an improving job market. The Dow dropped 61 points to close at 17,824. The Nasdaq lost 21 and the S&P 7. Twitter stock is flying high after the company said earnings nearly doubled from a year ago. Twitter has figured out how to make money from ads as it tries to increase its audience. 
But be careful what you tweet. It could now end up on a Google search. Twitter made a deal with Google, giving the search engine access to tweets. What's next for Radio Shack after filing for bankruptcy protection? The consumer electronics company will close about 2,000 stores in the U.S. Its deal with Sprint will open mini Sprint shops in about 1,700 stores. The deal would let the cell phone carrier expand its storefront presence during a competitive time in the wireless phone market. Big box stores are going small. Target says it will open eight new Target Express stores this year. They'll be smaller, quick service stores that cater to local demographics and can go up against drug stores such as CVS and Walgreens. Hey, good afternoon, guys. We have moved inside this area, this room that's located right off of Heritage Hall, and you got to come check it out. It's in range archery. Always so much fun and plenty of activities for you to check out here at the Kentucky Sport Boat and Recreation Show. Kyra is with us. And listen, you are one mean mama with that bow, honey. <laughs> Thank you. How long have you been doing this? I've been shooting archery probably about, um, about 20 years now. Tell us, uh, tell us about archery, and I understand, like right now, there's a movement getting it in the classrooms. Yes, there's over two million uh, NASP shooters um, every year, and 40% of them are girls. I love that. <laughs> Hence the reason we have a pink bow, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, so folks can come on out. Uh, the Kentucky Sport Boat and Recreation Show. You guys are doing a special little competition. Yes, we're doing a youth archery challenge. Um, where they will come and shoot at 10 meters. Uh, of course, everyone's trying to shoot that bullseye. Right. <laughs> and Even me, and I did not succeed. <laughs> and if they shoot a perfect score, they will go on to a 15 meter shoot. And so we will have first, second, and third uh, place prizes every single day that we have the challenge. We're not going to be doing it on Saturday, okay. but Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. All right. So Friday and Sunday, uh, today and Sunday, but not tomorrow. Come on out. I'm going to hand this to Ben. And Kyra has been instructing me. She's quite the instructor, I must say. Or I shouldn't say that till I let it fly, right? Oh, at least I hit the target. <laughs> Come on out to Kentucky Sport Boat and Recreation Show. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about. Back to you guys. In this countdown to game time, the undefeated UK basketball team heads to Florida, and UK football has a new class of cats. Kentucky takes its 22-0 record to Gainesville to face the Florida Gators, a team that's been struggling this season. WKYT sports anchor Brian Milam joins me. And John Calipari saying Trey Lyles still battling an illness, not expected to play tomorrow. Of course, Kentucky coming off the win Tuesday, 69-58 over Georgia. So how do you see Kentucky going into this game? It's one of those things where Kentucky, it's somebody new each game. Mm -hmm. Andrew Harrison steps up. First time we've seen Andrew in a couple of ball games, but then Willie Cauley-Stein kind of slides down a little bit. I see this game as basically Kentucky's going to try to have to fend off the home crowd and a lot of emotion because Florida, they lost to Vandy. I mean, that's a terrible loss. And you have the number one team coming in and Florida, Kentucky in Gainesville. Man, that's a special ball game. I think Kentucky's going to take it. They just have to survive the emotional aspect of it. You mentioned Willie Cauley Stein, Coach Calipari, saying this week that his ankle, the one that he had the procedure on, has been bothering him a little bit. Well, it, it, Something has been bothering because he's only had double digits in two of the last 11 games, um, but he's still doing well defensively because Georgia turned the ball over a lot the other night. And some people will say, well, they're not blocking shots. Well, they still have seven footers flying at you. Right. That's going to alter passes. That's going to alter shots. It's going to alter your mentality about doing something. Oh, gosh, there's that guy. I'm going to get rid of it. He's struggling a little bit, but everybody does at some point. We still have a month to go in the season. That's where I break out the Aaron Rodgers. Relax, <laughs> relax. There's a long way to go. Speaking of struggling, the Gators are struggling. They're 12 and 10, 5 and 4 in the SEC right now. Go figure. I don't think a lot of people saw this coming that they would be this bad because they are almost sub 500. Had they had a couple of you know breaks go that late for the other call team, yeah. Arkansas I mean, this is a team that is looking for an an identity a little bit. Uh, they have just not played well, and I think this is a, a game that it's, it's a dangerous game for one because it's on the road, but it's also you've got a wounded gator out there, and that's a dangerous animal. What is your prediction for this game? I think Kentucky, it's going to be one of those tough ones. I think Kentucky will uh, hit their free throws down the stretch, win by about 11 or 12. Wow. But um, 
I see this game to be in around the seven or eight mark mm -hmm. late in the second half. ESPN Game Day will be in Gainesville tomorrow for the Cats and the Gators. The game starts at nine o'clock on ESPN, and then Sunday catch a new edition of This Is Kentucky Basketball. With UK sophomore Dominique Hawkins as my co host, the former Kentucky Mr. Basketball from Madison County. Brian, he's talking about everything from his defense and dunks to his buddy Derek Willis. And that is Sunday morning at 1130 here in your official home for UK sports. He has a great personality. Oh, he's a great smile, great kid, great everything. Yes. Well, it's been a big week for UK football with National Signing right. Day, rivals ranking the Cats class 35th. What do you make of this class? Well, I think it's a lot better than people are giving, some people are giving it credit for because I think so many people want to look at what did UK not get? All of these decommitments. Forget that. They're not coming here. Let's focus about what UK has. And they've got a pretty darn good class when you figure out they have a couple of transfers from Nebraska, but they have 13 guys on defense. Where did UK really struggle last year and in years past? Defensively. This team is going to score points. They will put some, uh, a lot of yards together. But does any of that matter if you're giving up 40 points a game or 35 points a game? It doesn't. And I think that UK's defense has really uh, secured this class. A little bit here. It'll be exciting to see how it, it goes. Sure will. All right. Well, that's it for this countdown to game time. Thank you, Brian, for no being problem. here. Let's